everyone. Um, we're back from our trip and I wanted to give some um, some content to my vlog, which I'm just keeping track of what our progress are, what our thoughts are about um, going and looking at all the homesteads. And just some just some footnotes on what you saw and uh, what our real thoughts were about the properties. Um, <clears throat> the last house on the last video or part two um, was a major disappointment. Um, it was listed, um, I think, improperly. Um, it didn't. It didn't really have a lot of uh, the things on the listing that they had advertised that I picked up, and it was listed everywhere. I found it the same listing on Craigslist. I found the same listing on Land and Farm. I found the same listing on the Realtor site. So. Um, <clears throat> it looked like the property had been vacated, and my realtor did not want to show the house if you got any kind of feel of what she was doing. She didn't want us to buy that house, and she didn't want us to look at that house. So um, I knew from the onset that me demanding to see it probably wasn't a good idea, but I wanted to see it <clears throat> because it had two homes on it, which would offer my husband and I some, some versatility. Um, we had the two houses we liked the most were the ones we got the most comments about were the two-story blue house and the one with the stairs and the deck and the second house that we thought may or may not work. It didn't have a a real good place for us to have guests or anything like that, but it was the, the house um, that had the real pretty kitchen. Um, it was a three-bedroom. It would have worked for us, but we couldn't have really expanded our business or had guests over or even done both of those at the same time because it would have caused a problem. And the land really wasn't, um, it was straight back. And my husband, he doesn't like to have property lines that are just completely straight back. He likes to have them in different sizes or be, have a, different sizes to choose from, not necessarily just one strip of land from the front to the back. So he wasn't real gung-ho, although the house was clean and nice and um, they did have a dog cage with a dog in it sitting outside, so I guess that's their dog run for when they're not home. Um, on our way back from the trip, we talked about building because uh, my husband and I have always wanted uh, a log house or a log cabin, not really a cabin, but a log house. Um, I grew up with my dad owning, and I think they still do own some property in Colorado, right outside of Colorado Springs. And um, he bought land to build a log cabin on. He wanted to live there a year and watch all the seasons change in Colorado. And he has since passed, and that he didn't get to fulfill that dream. So I grew up listening and talking about log homes. I still even have, I think, my mother may or may not have the plans for the log house that my dad had in mind. He also had plans for a hexagon-shaped home, which I thought was strange. But he was a real estate developer, and... Um, architect and he designed homes so um, it's probably where I get my love of real estate but anyway we're going to look into what it would cost and why my nose is itching I guess somebody's talking about me but um, we're going to look into the cost of building we have um, several companies that I've reached out to to give us some information on what they charged to either you know do a complete build on a log home because I, I think from doing just a little bit of research, I'm going to dig further. Um, we could probably, you know, take six months and live in a rental property while we're waiting on our home to be built. That's an option for us. So um, I'm going to leave some links of some of the log homes that we're considering in case you're looking for a homestead or you're looking to build a log home or you want to look into building a log home. and um, give you some information there. I think you have to register to get pricing and floor plans and stuff like that, but typically you can see what we're looking at trying to do. And so our next step would be to be look for a piece of la usable land. And maybe they would have the wish list of my husband wants a pond. He wants, um, he doesn't want to live on a frontage. He wants a long driveway. So we're looking for that and a gated or fenced property. 
we would like to have the fencing already completed so he doesn't have to be putting up, him and I don't have to be putting up fencing, which as anyone knows that's done it, it's a, it's a really hard chore. So we'd like an entry gate um, real close to the one BC Trek has. If you've ever seen his videos, his entry gate on his property uh, is electronic, and my husband and I will end up putting in something close to, to the way that looks with some cameras, etc. So um, we're going to be looking into building, and that might be fun because I could document the building process, you know, finding that piece of land. Um, you know, maybe Arkansas isn't where we're supposed to find something. I don't know. Um, we're going to, our next target uh, is going to be uh, Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, we have heard a lot of really bad things about Kentucky as far as poverty, uh, medical care issues, as well as some drug issues that are going on throughout the state. Um, but I know that can't be encompassing of every single place in um, Kentucky. It'll be the rural areas of Louisville is what we'll probably end up looking at, somewhere where we can get a view and a good um, piece of beautiful property. And then uh, we should have enough to uh, build an outbuilding for my husband to have a wood shop and um, to be able to run our continue to run our business. Tennessee may offer uh, more availability for high-speed internet as well because that was the main thing that we could not find up in the Ozark areas or even in the Fort Smith areas was high-speed internet. So if you like to Skype with your grandchildren or you like to watch movies online or just your day-to-day -day, uh, what you get used to in the, in the city life is being high-speed internet, um, it's really not available in the Fort Smith or in the Ozark area of Arkansas. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that's going to be developed over time. It's not going to stay the same, but it's something that I have to have in order to continue to run my business. Um, we, we were planning on doing a lot more stuff and maybe perhaps staying the weekend, but I just couldn't. I had too much business inflowing. I had to rush back and get my customer orders completed, which I'm still in the midst of doing today. Um, I, uh, I had a canning video this week, and then I have a regular recipe video coming this week um, before Saturday. Those two I plan on. And one of the, well, the canning video I'm going to do is not something you normally see canned. So, um, and it's not a milk product, so I think you'll be interested in that one. And I've not seen it on YouTube yet, um, and maybe I need to dig further, but I, I'm trying to find things that people uh, would be interested to see that they normally can't find. I'm going to also be dehydrating onions. Um, Mrs. Volby has the best, best video for dehydrating onions. So. I'm more than likely, if I video it, it'll be just for my video log and no pressure to watch it. No, I mean, I'm, I'm basically filling content um, and allowing you guys to share. Um, this is for my children and my, my grandchildren to be able to see, uh, you know, what's gone on in my life and, and how I go about my daily business and um, be able to watch how I earned money, et cetera, and watch, you know, the last pretty much the last journey of my life the next 50 years if I live to be 100. Um, so anyway, I do have quite a few pretty large bell peppers on my bell pepper plant while I was gone. They're blooming. I can't believe it. I don't have any tomatoes yet. Um, but I got a comment uh, that the Texas heat could be of having our tomatoes go dormant, which I never thought of. And my husband is so anxious to build a greenhouse for the fall and winter, um, maybe next spring having the tomatoes in the greenhouse will help for the heat because we can get it ventilated and really help um, get the tomatoes up and growing. But I wanted to give you that feedback on the fitness of uh, property. If you know of a property in and around the United States, it's a rural property that's for sale, feel free to email it to me. We're going to try to keep our budget under 160000 because we're going to be paying cash. And uh, the more, the more, um, the less we have to spend on the home, the more cash we'll have available in the bank for savings. And we're going to continue to grow and build our business together. And once my husband retires from his company and we move.
So um, but we'd love to take that journey on and share that with you. So um, if you're continuing to watch our channel, there's lots of content, lots of information. The fireplace is completely sanded. I want to give you that quick update too. The fireplace, all it needs is a prime and paint now. So I'll be doing a small video on the prime and paint, and then I'll do a larger extended video of the tile work that we're going to do on it, on the floor, and on the horizontally on the actual the fireplace. So I hope you'll stick around and stay tuned, and I hope everybody has a blessed day. Thanks so much for my subscribers. I can't wait till I have enough to do a giveaway. And um, if you would like to comment and tell me anything uh, that you know, might be a good giveaway that you've not seen any other homesteading and farming type video uh, channels give away, I'm open for suggestions. I'm happy to do that. Um, once I reach 500 uh, subscribers, I will be doing uh, giveaways and lots of different things. Um, I'm going to be mailing my Pots, Pans, and Pioneers cookbook out to everybody. Um, that'll be in the works. And it's not a little tiny cookbook. It's a big cookbook. It's got all the recipes from women all over the United States that my grandmother connect, uh, connected with. And she put that cookbook together when she, um, before she passed. And I'm going to be mailing it out to um, the winners uh, eventually when I get enough. And um, let me see if I have a copy of it. This is how thick it is. So if you can see that, it's got a little dust on it. And there is the cookbook. And it's really thick. It's not thick. And it's got tons of recipes in it. So that's going to be one of my giveaways. And uh, they still publish it. And it is still for sale on Amazon.com. But, you know, you might get a chance to win it. And there's three volumes. That's just one of the volumes. There's actually three volumes of the cookbook. And, um... Anyway, I hope you guys will stick around and join us, and uh, everybody have a blessed week. Take care. Bye-bye.